Hello, welcome to Effort to Ease Empowered Mindset Series. Today, I'm going to guide you through three empowering yoga poses, the Warrior Series. So we'll move through Warrior One, Warrior Two, Warrior Three. So starting with Warrior One, you can start with the feet about hip width apart, step one foot back, doesn't matter which one you start with, I stepped my left foot. Um, you can step one foot back, keep the distance between the feet as short or far away as you, your body allows to keep that back heel anchored to the ground. So here, we're going to really press down through that back heel, engaging the quad and stretching through the calf. If you do need a little bit of a bend to that knee, if that feels uncomfortable, you can bring a little bend to the knee. Otherwise, without locking the knee out, a little straighten, a little uh, extension through that knee, extension through the hip, and pressing down through the heel and the pinky edge of the foot, if that feels okay for your foot. And then the front foot here, uh, front knee, first of all, is bent just above the ankle. We're pressing straight down. So we're engaging the hamstrings, back of the thigh. We're pressing straight down through the foot, straight down the, through the heel and through the ball of the foot. Almost as though there's a little bit of a lift through the center arch of the foot. So we have a little bit of space there and we're, we're allowing the toes to wiggle a little bit. Sometimes, especially as we get older, joints stiffen. Uh, see if you can, see if you can wiggle your toes, allow yourself that bit of playfulness. So warrior one, little bit more closed hip position, little bit open here on my left side or whatever that back foot is stepped back. There's a little bit of openness, a little bit of a, a tad bit of external rotation. And then front foot or front thigh, internal, internal rotation through that thigh and hip. And arms are always just expression. So we set that foundation, we press strong through the feet, we're strong from heels to hips, and then we can start to bring this into the upper body. So first let's lift the shoulders up, take that breath in, and then roll the shoulders back and down, opening the palms um, to face forward. So we have this openness through the shoulders, this openness through the chest, very open hearted here. And then we're strong through the belly, almost like you're trying to pull the belly button toward the spine, strong through the abs, drawing the tailbone down. So we have this nice, strong, stable stance from heels to hips to abs. And then we can um, have this openness through the chest and shoulders, and then we can bring the arms into it by reaching the arms up. So here, reaching the arms straight forward up, breath in. And I like to flow the arms a little bit so you can release the arms out and down, breath out. Arms forward and up, breath in, checking in with your mobility through the shoulders, releasing the arms out and down. And then again, forward and up, inhale, and out and down. And then we'll step the back foot forward and switch, stepping the opposite foot back. Again, anchor, find that foundation, setting up that foundation first, finding that strength from the bottoms of the feet, to the thighs, to the hips, to the abs. And then once again, when you're ready, you can start to uh, reach the arms forward and up, taking that breath in and then releasing the arms out and down, or you can just keep reaching the arms up, reaching the arms forward and up, inhale, out and down, exhale. Again, reaching forward and up, and releasing the arms out and down. And then let's take the, that movement the other way around so that we're keeping this position about as long as we did on the other side. So here, we'll reach the arms back and up. See how far back you can go, what your range of motion is there. And releasing the arms forward and down. Still staying nice and tall, long through the spine. Reach back and up, inhale. Forward and down. So a lot of our yoga practice when you get into the physical practice of yoga, a lot of it is very, very heavily focused on the lower body, the strength there. So knowing some of these basic poses, the warrior one, warrior two, and warrior three can help um, build that strength and then allow you to have better success um, in those 
classes where you'll find yourself in those warrior poses and those very empowering poses. And you can reach up, you can look up, gazing up to all the possibilities that are in your mind, all the dreams that you have, all the goals you have set. And then again, release the arms out and down. Awesome. Now let's step that back foot forward and we'll bring this into our warrior two position. So stepping the opposite foot back. Here again, I stepped my left foot back this time, um, first rather. And this time I'm turning the toes. So if you have a mat laid down and you, add, you don't need to have a mat down, you don't even need to have your shoes off. Um, you can do this pretty much wherever you're, wherever you are uh, wearing whatever you wear. Here we have the back foot turned out about 90 degrees. Or if you do have a mat laid down, toes facing that long edge of the mat. So here, a little bit more of this external rotation through the back hip, still maintaining a little bit of this internal rotation through that front hip, but, the keep, but then keeping that front knee, again, just directly above the ankle. So again, setting up that foundation first, pressing down through the heels, you're right away, feel the glutes start to engage, feel the outer thighs start to engage, and then reach the arms out and up, shoulder height, out to this T. You can keep the neck neutral. You can gaze behind you, take that breath in. Gaze out in front of you over that right shoulder here, um, if you have that left foot back. And then other alternative things that you can do with the arms, you can reach the arms up. Also here, you can just rest the arms down. You can reach the arms out in front of you, maybe do some rows, pull that in, get into the uh, rotator cuff muscles with some external rotation through the shoulders. Lots of different um, varieties that you can play around with here with the arms and that expression. So here, we may have a little bit wider stance. Again, depends on where your body's at. You might be able to set the feet apart a little bit wider. So do feel free to bring that into as deep or shallow a lunge as your body allows. Here, to come out of this, a couple of different ways. You can straighten that front leg, pivot the feet, uh, toes forward, and then hop together or pivot the feet together, coming back to that um, standing position, that mountain pose, or you can simply pivot the back foot in until you turn it back into your warrior one stance and then bring the back foot forward. So a few different ways to go there. Here, we'll step that opposite foot back. So I'm stepping my right foot back into my warrior two, pressing down through the heels, setting that foundation, a little bit more of this openness through the hips, still lift and openness through the chest. You can let the palms open to find that, and then express the arms, however makes best sense for you. Again, I like to sometimes take a little gaze over the back shoulder, and then look forward over the front shoulder to even out that stretch through the neck, or of course, you can keep the neck neutral. What can be nice to think about here is as you're looking behind, you can start to reflect on past uh, activities, past uh, people from your past, memories, uh, behaviors, thoughts, and what do you want to bring with you? What do you want to leave? So you could open the palm to kind of release whatever you want to release. You could close that palm and then look forward with whatever you're bringing with you. Look forward to where you're going. So um, a lot of times we can turn our warrior two into a half moon pose. And I'll go ahead and demo that here. You can turn that half or that warrior two into a half moon pose by bringing the weight, looking in the direction that you're going. You can rest that back hand on the hip and release 
the front hand toward the ground. Now, a little bit more challenging position, of course, um, but just something to think about as you're looking back, seeing what you can release, what you want to bring forward with you, and then look forward with those new lessons from your past, and maybe with, um, maybe a little bit lighter, having let go of some things. All right, and then we'll release the arms. Uh, again, however you want to come out of your warrior two, feel free. I'm gonna pivot that back foot forward, turn it into a warrior one, and step the back foot forward. Now for our warrior three pose. Warrior three, um, so all of these have some kind of element of balance to them. You may have noticed, especially if you've never done these poses before, you may have noticed, ooh, this is a little, especially our warrior one, right? Heels in one line. This is a little shaky. Great. We are working on our bodies to keep our bodies and brains working well. So warrior three pose, you might want to bring in a chair. Um, you could also bring in a chair for your warrior ones or for your warrior twos as well. So do feel free to bring in whatever support you need for your body. So warrior three with the chair, you can place the hands on the back of a folding chair, bring a little bit of a bend to the knees, now pop the hips back as you hinge at the hips and then press here, I'm pressing the left heel back. So this is our warrior three, our supported warrior three. Find a little lift through the low belly, so we're engaging the abs there. And then again, you can express the arms. Just hover the hands above the chair, especially if your balance is super, super shaky. Um, otherwise, just take the hands off and reach forward, out, reach back, hands to prayer, all good places to be. Then we'll bring that back foot forward with the chair again, hands to the back of the chair, a little bend to the knees, pop the hips back as you hinge, and then press the right heel back. And again, strong belly, almost as though you're hugging this thigh into the hips or staying nice and strong still, again, from heel to hip, even with that leg lifted, and then option to express the arms in whatever way makes best sense for you here today, especially whatever is going on in the shoulders. And then bring that back foot forward and come back. Here, without the chair, you can start in your warrior one, stepping a foot back, reach out and up, inhale, and then hinging forward, reach forward and pick the back foot, oh, pick the back foot up off the ground. And then bring the back knee forward and up, come into your one leg mountain, release the arm down, and then switch that up. Stepping the opposite foot back, again into your warrior one, reach up, hinge, reach forward, and into warrior three where we're taking flight. And then bringing that back knee forward and up, release the arms down, release the foot down, walk it out, shake it out. So again, strong, empowering movement to uh, move you into your day, maybe something that you can do in the middle of your day, especially if you're feeling a little bit depleted, um, or even at the end of your day, uh, whether you are enjoying, right? This can be, you know, our, our power poses can be, yes, I'm doing great, or to help us to feel better about whatever challenging situations we might have. So getting into your warrior one, you can open that up to your warrior two, come back to your warrior one, and then warrior three. So that could be a sequence that you use, or you could do one pose, all three poses in different ways. So again, I'll demo that sequence again. Here, stepping the, the left foot back into your warrior one, breathe in. Open up to your warrior two on your breath out. Pivot back into your warrior one on your inhale. And take flight in warrior three on that exhale. And then however you want to come back to center, feel free. Now to move on to the self-inquiry portion of our practice. Thanks for moving with me.
Hello, welcome to the self-inquiry portion of our Empowered Mindset series. Asking a few questions. So we just got done with our warrior series. And so I want to ask the question, how are you being a warrior for yourself? And by that, I mean, how are you exhibiting strength in a situation in your life, exhibiting resilience or building strength and building resilience? And remembering from our last episode, our last Empowered Mindset series episode, that rest is part of that resilience build. But today we we talked about setting that foundation. So what are some of those foundational things in addition to rest that you can do to build resilience, whether that looks like getting out of your comfort zone in some way or strengthening some area of your mind, body, emotion, spirit. The other question is how powerful or empowered do I feel right now? And being really honest with yourself about where your head is at. And then what actions or action am I taking to operate from a space of empowerment? So maybe you feel very empowered, you feel valued, you feel that self-validation, you feel worthy, and you're in a really good headspace. What actions got you there? And this is just so that we can remember to repeat those. Um, Remember that, oh, yeah, I got up for a walk this morning, or I got some sunlight, or I talked to a friend. Maybe I read an inspirational quote or listened to a motivational podcast. Whatever those little actions are that we took throughout the day that got us to this headspace, that we feel strong and empowered, and like warriors, like we can take on the day no matter what what comes at us um, or what doesn't. We're asking what actions led to that to that headspace. And then if we're not maybe feeling so powerful, maybe we're not feeling empowered, maybe we're in a lot of self-doubt, maybe we're uh, feeling uh imposter syndrome or something like that, we might ask ourselves, what actions are holding me back? Um, What actions or non-actions are holding me back from feeling empowered or from feeling powerful, from feeling like a warrior? So the reason, again, that we do the movement first is because while thought can lead action, Action can also change our mind. So when we stand in these powerful warrior positions, we can start to see ourselves, perceive ourselves as powerful, as empowered beings on this earth, in this, in this space, in our realms of influence. So again, How are you being a warrior for yourself? How powerful or empowered am I feeling? What actions led to that feeling of empowerment? And if we're not feeling empowered, what actions or non-actions are holding us back from that space? So just some things to think about as we move through our mindset practice, examining our beliefs, examining our perceptions of ourselves, of ourselves in relation to the world around us, examining our, uh, our beliefs and thoughts about the world around us. So with all of that, once again, um, ways that you can get into that headspace, that empowered mindset headspace, movement, always start with even just the smallest bit, just standing in place sometimes, maybe taking that step back and rising to your warrior one, opening to warrior two, taking flight into warrior three, getting that movement in. And then maybe it's other things, again, the inspirational quotes, the motivational podcasts, the connection with a friend or a walk outside in nature. 
So whatever that looks like for you, I encourage you to perceive your value, perceive your worth, and to operate from that empowered space. And when you're not there, come into that space of radical acceptance. Okay, I'm not here. I'm not here right now. But what is one small, small thing, bit of movement that you can do to keep moving forward? With all of that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Peace.